All right, now as it approaches in the short run, we saw a long run. So we saw in the long run prices adjust. And exchange rates are determined by basically the monetary policy. What happens in the short run? Well, what's going to happen in the short run is going to be determined by our UIP, our uncovered interest parity condition. So, you know, the Federal Reserve conducts expansionary monetary policy to expand the money supply. Yeah. In the long run, we know that that's going to make US goods more expensive because the GDP did not change in the long run and things, things did not get more productive, right? So the number of goods is the same in the long run. There's more money, so the prices of US goods will be higher. What happens in the short run? In the short run, the prices of goods do not change. But uh, what does change? What does take place immediately or very, very quickly? You know, when, uh, and I forget the names, so I forget Pfizer, right? And then Moderna, they say that they have a vaccine that is, uh, you know, whatever, successful for a certain rate. What is the first thing that changes? Stock prices, financial asset prices. So if the monetary authority changes the money supply, we know that that's going to affect the interest rate. And so long as we have international mobility of capital, so long as from your computer you can buy a foreign asset, that means that immediately there's going to be changes in the asset portfolios of financial actors all over the world. And if you want to buy US assets, you need US dollars. So that will affect the exchange rate right away. And so this is the idea. In the short run, financial market determine the exchange rate. In the long run, when prices of financial goods are just, that's what's gonna determine the exchange. The equilibrium in the market for financial assets, we already saw that. And that was in our uncovered interest parity condition. Okay. We basically saw that the interest rate on dollar deposits or on uh, the treasury bond, equals the interest rate on your deposit plus the expected rate of depreciation. If we picture here in this figure on the forex market, returns on the vertical axis, exchange rate today, obviously the spot rate, uh, dollar euro, the domestic return is a horizontal curve. So see here is uh, <laughs> numbers that we haven't seen in a decade. So domestic return of 5%. Now, if we also plot the right-hand side on that figure, okay, so we plot the expected dollar rate of return on the euro deposit, how does that depend on the exchange rate today? Well, I mean, this thing is declining in the exchange rate, right? Minus here, so declining, uh, denominator, so all declining, right? Make sense? So when we plot that relationship, we have that the expected return on foreign returns is declining in today's exchange rate. Okay? Why is that? When you're an American investor, US investor and you buy euro returns, euro bonds, your return is the highest the more the dollar depreciates because you're going to get euros, right? So the more the dollar is, is going to lose value vis-a-vis -vis the euro, the higher your return. Follow me? I'll follow you? So the more the dollar depreciates already, the lower the future depreciation that's going to happen. Okay? This is what this figure is telling us. Okay? And when the two things are equal to one another, well, we find what is today's spot rate of the exchange rate. And obviously, that means that the domestic return also equals to the foreign return. All right, guys?
The idea here is obviously when in the, in the short run, so prices of final goods do not change. And as always, he has like written what I'm saying. Okay, so we know in the uh, money market, what we basically have is the money demand, remember declining in the interest rate, we saw last time. If GDP increases, you demand more money. If GDP decreases, you demand less money. And then we have the money supply, which is just a vertical line because uh, it just comes from the central bank. And we divide that by the price level and we call the whole thing a money balance, real money balance. So in the money market, the interest rate is determined and that obviously is gonna map into the forex market, the market for the exchange rate here. And that's gonna give us a certain level of the exchange rate. So in the short run, what's gonna happen if the money supply increases? Well, now we are putting uh, figures together, okay? The, the, and so far it's still gonna be simple, eh? it's gonna get more complicated. But so, we start from this initial situation, right? So let's look at point one. There's gonna be an increase in the real money balances, so the money supply increases. So there's a shift to the right of the money supply, okay? So by shifting to the right, the money supply, that means that we're gonna cross the money demand at the lower level of the interest rate. And so the interest rate declines. Okay? Make sense, guys? If the interest rate declines, that means that the domestic return declines. Right? So that means the US dollar give you a lower return. So what are you gonna do? by euros, so you can have European deposit, right? So the money supply increases. This is a short run, prices of final good don't change. The interest rate declines, and we go on the panel A from point one to point two, because an increase in the money supply reduces the interest rate. We know that from macro. The decline in the interest rate is basically making us move along this uh, foreign return curve from 0.1 prime to 0.2 prime, and that means that the dollar is going to depreciate today. Okay? 